Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be showing you how you can use Veeam to back up your uh, virtual machines in VMware and then how you can restore them afterwards. So, this video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So, if you enjoy my content, want to sponsor me or send me some free swag, let me know. My email is in the description below. So, let's get started, guys. All right. So, in. One of our previous videos, we installed Veeam on our Windows 2022 server. So let's remote desktop to it here. Um, Veeam at Dragon.local. All right, let's log in. All right, so from here, we can go to the console, connect to our Veeam server here, which is installed on the same server um, and we'll let that load. Um, so obviously the prereq here is essentially you're running VMware and you have VMs on that. If you're using Proxmox, I don't know entirely. I don't have actually a Proxmox setup, so I would have to look into that, but I'm, I'm assuming you could probably do it on both, honestly. Um, all right, so the first thing that we can do here is add a server. So this will be essentially adding our, in this case, vSphere or Hyper-V server. Um, there doesn't look like an option for like Proxmox or like Citrix. So you might be out of luck if you're using either of those, but those could be in like the paid edition. Um, you might have to double check that. But in this case, we're in luck. So we're gonna use vSphere. We will use the vSphere client instead of the cloud director. We'll enter the DNS name up in here for our vCenter. And we will add our credential here for administrator at vSphere.local is what we have for our login. So this would just be your vCenter login here. We'll add that and we'll hit apply. Um, certificate of security alert, no worries. Just hit continue on that. And then it'll check the vSphere connection. So it will start the infrastructure update. You'll get to start seeing um, the things that need to pop up. So you can see on the left side, the inventory here, we got our vCenter. Um, this will be collecting disk and volume info and everything is all green. So we hit next and we hit finish. So now you can see we've hooked up our vCenter up in here. Um, so we actually have a few pools. Um, you can see, and we'll, we'll focus on our dragon pool because these are all the VMs that I've created for all of my home lab series videos. So, um, you know, after two months of like daily videos, it's, it's starting to pick up. There's been a lot of VMs that I've created and, um, you know, have had a good time with it. So hopefully you guys have been enjoying the video so far. Um, so this video will be specifically focusing on just backing up one of these VMs and then restoring it. So what we'll do here is, um, well, I think I was gonna target this micro bin. So we're gonna target our micro bin server. So if you right click that, you can create a new backup job. So the backup job is essentially a job just to back up the VM that you can restore from. So we'll create a new job here from that. Um, we'll name it backup job, it's fine. Um, and then you can actually create multiple backup jobs or like create a backup job with multiple VMs. Sorry, but you can create multiple backup jobs also. Um, so you can add more VMs if you want to. Um, in this case, we're just gonna target one VM. Um, then you kind of got a selection of things that you can pick. Um, the backup repository is just the default repository that was created with this, which is essentially just how much space I have on this um, machine, which is only 500 gigs that I allocated. Um, in this case, if you, you know, wanted to, you know, use this as a, an actual backup server, um, you probably want more than 500 gigs because it will easily, easily max out, um, depending on how big your VMs are. Um, but in this case, this is for demo purposes. So 500 gigs is more than enough. You can pick your retention period by days or restore points. We're going to just do by days so we can keep essentially seven days worth of stuff. And then we'll hit next here. Now, there are a few other options which are, which are very interesting, which is the application aware processing, as well as guest file system indexing. In this case, we're not gonna enable either of those, but um, we might do that for a different video because being able to search and do one-click restores on individual files is very nice. Um, so we might we might have to do that um, later, but we'll, we won't do that in this video. We're just gonna show you how to backup and restore VM. Um, and then we will select, we'll run this job daily essentially. So worst case scenario, this job runs daily. So if I ever needed to restore back this VM back, it would be, you know, at 10 PM that the previous day, essentially. Um, this is useful in regards to like, you need to restore VM because something really broke on it and you only lose a day's worth of work as opposed to having a VM and then not having a restore point or having a restore point that's like four weeks back and you're like, Worst case, now it's four weeks back instead of daily. So 
Um, that's kind of the thought process around, you know, how often you should run your jobs and why you wouldn't run those jobs a little bit more often than not. Um, obviously, you got to consider space utilization. Um, so if you're doing daily snapshots, you probably don't want to keep snapshots for like that long. Um, but in this case, we're, we're totally fine. So we'll leave at daily 10 p.m. every day and we will hit this checkbox to run the job when I finish. Um, so that will essentially kick off your first very initial snapshot. Um, so now that we've created a job, we can go back to home here. Um, we can see it running. Um, so we can hit this running and we can look at the job. So in here, it will show us that the job started building lots of machines, 3M size is 40 gigs, 4.4 gigs is used. Um, and it will essentially start backing up. Um, I don't remember how long this actually will take. So we'll probably fast forward the video to show you when this has finished. So, all right. So that took like maybe like a minute. It, it, it took a minute and 29 seconds. Um, but it was really quick because the VM that I'm on and the VM that I backed up were both on NVMe. So essentially it's like, boom, really quick. Um, if you're using, you know, SSD, it might be a tad bit slower, probably not that much slower. And then if you're using spinning disk, it's going to be definitely a lot slower to transfer because your processing rate will be a lot less than 448 megabytes per second. Um, but in this case was very quick for me. So now, now we have a backed up VM. So we, we got, we got our backup. We backed up our VM. Now the question is, how do I restore, right? Um, because you can easily back up. That's, that's, that's no problem. That is no problem at all. Um, but restoring is also the other thing that you have to know and test, right? So we can go back over here and to our inventory and then to our resource group, we can go on the server and we can right click on the server and there's a restore option actually, right? So there's a few things that you can do um, where you can do instant recovery um, to VMware. We can do restore entire VM, restore virtual disk, restore VM files. Um, so in this case, we're going to just restore entire VM. So let's take this as a case scenario that the VM completely died. There was, there's an issue. You pretty much went, oh shit, this is, this is, this is not good, right? I need to, I need to restore. So you can restore the complete VM. We'll hit next on this. Um, so we can restore to the original location. So it would go back to where it essentially was, or we can restore it to a new location. Um, and, and this would make a lot of sense if you want to restore it and keep your own VM, right? So if you restore it to original location, it would essentially delete the existing VM. Um, and if you want to keep it for like troubleshooting or, or whatnot, you probably want to use the restore new location with different settings. Um, but in this case, I don't care if, if that VM gets destroyed, so we'll just restore to original location. But depending on your use case, you might want to use the new location instead. So we'll hit next on this. It'll retrieve all the cool policies and everything that it needs to retrieve. Uh, restore reason is because this is fun. Um, you don't actually have to put a real reason, but you, you probably should put a reason if, if someone ever looks at this for auditing purposes. <laughs> Yeah, so because essentially I'm restoring from the VM that's already on, it'll power off and delete. So, yep, and then it'll, it essentially says, yep, power off and will be deleted, and then it will recreate the new one. So we'll power on the new v target VM, so the backup, once it is created. So actually, before we do this, before we do this, um, I'm actually logged into our, my micro bed server, and we can create a uh, new file, touch, uh, file after backup, right? So now we can see that there's a file after backup in here. Um, this file won't exist because it's the file created after it was backed up. So, but to kind of just show you that, you know, it's only a point in time snapshot, we're going we're gonna to create that file. So now we'll hit finish. Um, so now you got this essentially log console page. Um, it's kind of weird because it doesn't look like it really logs because it like actually seems like a, you know, like a, a table that outputs, but it's actually a log file essentially, um, that will tell. So, you know, it would do the processing, um, take down the micro bin server, add it back in, and then we will see how it goes essentially. Um, we will fast forward for when this is finished. Okay. So now we've essentially 
restored back to our state, whatever, like two minutes ago. <laughs> um, so now it's, it's successfully restored. So what I can do is actually I'll show you um, in our vCenter. Let me go back to our other box. Um, so in our vCenter, we can see that essentially what it does, Veeam actually powers off, reconfigures, creates a new virtual machine named Dragonbin, which runs to the snapshot that it has, and then powers it back on. Um, so I'm going to get kicked out of the session, right? But if I were to re-log back in, boop, here, um, I can list the files, and you can see that only the test file is there now, because that's the file that was there when it was backed up. Um, we can do W and see that the server has only been up for one minute. Um, and yeah, so essentially, it got restored back to the point in time of when that backup was created. So that's how you can create a backup, restore to the backup, and have your systems ready back up again in a few minutes, depending on how big the you know size of the backup needed to be restored. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.